today we have chapter 8 innovation and change strategic role of change today's organizations must pose uh, themselves to uh, innovate and change under the idea of innovate or perish how many people think change is important how many people say no change is bad Sometimes it's bad. Okay, what's bad about change? You're not used to what you. You're not used to what you used to do, and now you've got something new to do. Uh, what do you guys think here in LIU if we change our system? People will be scared, right? Because you don't know what's gonna happen. Okay, uh, maybe the change will be good. Maybe it will be bad. Maybe it will fail. Now, do companies have to uh, change? Or uh, companies, they can st stay the way they used to. Change is very important. In fact, this is what they say here. Uh, it says, it says here, innovate, otherwise you perish. Do you know the word perish? Perish, you die, right? So the idea of change is not change for the sake of changing as much as changing for innovation. How can we do better? How can we improve what we do? And that's the idea of innovation. Uh, innovate uh, or perish. There are powerful forces that make uh, change very important. For example, uh, technology. Now, uh, do we use our, uh, are we using our technology in this class? <coughs> yes, we have to use. We use the, this uh, Facebook communication, the Moodle communication. We uh, also uh, use emails uh, so uh, number two we've got another powerful source which is the international economic integration because now we are one big global economy there's so much integration on the other countries on the other companies from others from overseas so that becomes another source or powerful source making change to be inevitable you have to change you have to innovate in order to stay Number three, we've got the maturing domestic markets. The markets in themselves, they mature. After a while, people uh, demand more. Let's say, uh, you guys remember uh, you know, what restaurants offer? And then after a while, all restaurants have the same offering. And now, uh, there's a lot of offerings of the same level. The only people who will survive, the people who innovate. They improve their, uh, let's say, menus. People, they improve their... Uh, uh, restaurants decoration inside they add new meals that's how they can uh, stay in business otherwise old ways of doing things no uh, longer people will accept them uh, maturing uh, and then globalization the idea of globalization if you see the whole world they've got new products and services then you people they want these new products and services therefore companies they have to innovate uh, otherwise they will not be able to survive so to manage threats and opportunities, organizations must change. Why do you change? To manage threats and opportunities. Uh, forces driving the need for uh, major organizational change. So let's uh, see this uh, slide. Global changes, competition, markets. So we've got technological changes. Every day there's new technologies in every business. You're a restaurant, there's new technology. Uh, you are an uh, educational institution, there's new technology. Uh, you are a shop, there's a new technology. Uh, mature, uh, maturation of markets, uh, especially in developed countries. So there's a lot of uh, customers are getting more services, more products, and uh, therefore they demand more. And a fall of commu communism and social regimes. You guys remember the Soviet Union in the old days, and then the idea of communism and socialism. The idea of socialism where all the people, uh, they work under the government and people uh, don't buy anything they want. The government will give them their salaries in terms of items or products. That died. And now we're more capitalist. Uh, people have their own money and with your money you buy whatever you want. Therefore, there's more competition and there's more need for major uh, changes. So we've got here opportunities. We have bigger markets, more people buy, fewer barriers, and we've got more international markets. On the other hand, there are more threats. There are more domestic competition. There are more increased speed, and there is more international competition. So if you want to survive in the 21st century, what do you need to do? 
Um, so we've got more large scale changes in organization. Uh, you know, companies, they do, uh, when you, how do you do change as a company? What do you change? This is what you change. You can change your structure, okay? Remember you change your home design? You, you add more departments, you close the department. Do you think inside uh, Abu Walad company, did they change over the years? Probably they changed. Maybe they have a new department, they have got, do you see? Maybe they use a new strategy. Maybe they have a new culture. <coughs> they have now maybe knowledge management. Maybe they have an ERP system, a quality programs. Maybe they have merged joint venture or consortia. Maybe they have an inter a horizontal organization, maybe more teams, networks, new technologies, a new business process. Maybe they have an e-commerce today, e-learning, they're becoming more learning organization. So these are all examples of changes that happens inside the company. Maybe the product from outside is the same, but inside the company, they must have done a lot of innovation. Do you see? In order to stay efficient and keep up with the competition, do you see? Uh, we've got strategic type of change. Uh, you need to have a good leadership uh, in order to change. Uh, technology, uh, maybe you change your products and services, maybe your strategy and structure or your culture. Are you guys okay with these changes? These are types of change. Um, the elements of successful change. How can you make a good uh, successful change? You need to have a good idea and a good need for it. And then the idea, probably it comes from internal creativity or it comes from your suppliers, professional associations, consultants, and research literature. That's where you get new ideas. And we've got to do uh, a need that perceive problem uh, opportunities. Uh, customers, competition, legislation, regulation, labor force. Once you have an idea and a need, uh, you do adapt to adoption, implement, and you need to have some resources to make this successful. Let's say, for example, uh, we want to change how our campus works, and uh, we want students to do activities on campus. So uh, where do we get ideas for your projects? Maybe from... Uh, internal creative innovation. You know, some people are creative. Uh, we want to do this uh, project, volleyball. Okay. Maybe, you know, we did this VOD program, right? So here we've got this idea of, you know, okay, we want to do something for the culture. We want to do this literature. We want to promote reading. Uh, so we've got this idea. And there's also a need for it. You know, the co competitors, customers, other students on campus, uh, a lot of rules and a lot of forces. Uh, they say we've got this problem. You know, people forgetting the good uh, sound uh, Arabic, uh, you know, poetry and literature. and So that's a need. So now we adopt them. We make this program, we implement it, and we need some resources to make it successful. Does this make sense? Uh, what are technology changes uh, to be both an organic and mechanistic? Managers implement an ambidextrous approach. What is this ambidextrous approach? It says structures and management processes that will push innovation. If you're the general manager, you want more uh, organic structure, maybe be more mechanistic. Creative departments instead of using departments. You want to expand capabilities, explore, develop new ideas. Instead of <coughs> exploiting capabilities, routine applications of new ideas. Uh, are you guys okay with this? No? Let's see. Uh, let's see. We'll get back to this. When you talk about techniques, how can you encourage technological change? Uh, Maybe you want to switch your structure. You want to maybe you, uh, create a more organic structure. Uh, you guys remember uh, when we talked about organic and mechanistic companies? Yes. Yes. We said organic companies like advertising, right? You bring one designer, two designers, one marketer, two marketers, get together, we've got this new idea, magic, right? Mechanistic companies, they don't come up with any magic. They're more into... Uh, we talked physics, right? Where they're more routine, do you see? 
you take a chicken, you cut the head, you cut the wings, you cut the, you see, and the next, you take a chicken, you cut the head, you cut the wings, you cut the, you take the third, and it's more mechanistic. So maybe you want to switch. Uh, how can you change your company to be more creative? Uh, you go with building, uh, you know, creative departments. That's when you have some departments for innovation, okay? So maybe if you go to CAC Bank, they have now a department called Research and Development, where they come up with new ideas. That's how they come with CAC Mobile, which is a mobile phone application that you can use to pay your bills. Uh, we've got sometimes venture teams. Do you know what's a venture team? It's a small company within the organization. So inside the company, we have a small team. These people, their job is to create, change, develop, come up with new. Corporate entrepreneurship. That's where you promote entrepreneurial spirit. So maybe inside your company, you have some, uh, do you guys remember Google? Inside Google, they tell people, 20% of your time, do anything you wanna do. Any idea you wanna do, do it. 20% of the time. We don't require you to do anything specific. Do anything you want to do for the company. So people can come up with new ideas and projects. <coughs> collaborative teams as collaboration for innovation. So these people, they collaborate. You guys know the word collaborate? You work together in order to achieve something new. So that's how you can, uh, uh, you can some techniques to encourage uh, change. So this technology change, uh, you want technology and the use of tools, let's say maybe software or let's say CAC bank, they need to use the computer technology in order to allow better banking. You want this to happen both on a mechanistic level and on an organic level in order to have your management, your process, your work, all to generate, create, push more innovation, okay? Uh, that's one way of change. Number two, is the new product and services. So, do you guys think uh, your company can develop with new products and services? If you want your organization to grow, you can use technology. Number two, you can use new products and services. <coughs> Reasons for success. Innovating companies understand customers. And innovating companies successfully use technology. And top management support innovation. And uh, those will be reasons for you to succeed. You can also do more horizontal coordination model. You guys know what we mean by horizontal? Uh, specialization, boundary spanning, uh, horizontal coordination. Do you guys know what these? No. Okay. Uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to have more ideas, let's say if you're at home, and you want your home to do something creative, okay? Maybe if you have more people in your home specialized, the more they become specialized, the more they can become efficient, and therefore, if they start to work together and they are specialized, they can do a better job. Does that make sense? Sir, are they specialized in the same measure? No, specialized in different areas. Boundary spanning is how, how much each of departments in your company they can work with the other departments outside their boundary. See, if you are focused, if you're inside the kitchen and only you do things inside the kitchen, then you become very specialized inside the kitchen and you can do very good stuff in the kitchen. That's good. Now, the second step after you specialize, you need to have some sort of a spanning. You need to go outside of the kitchen. Maybe the other person who watch TV all the time and know all of the TV channel shows and programs that has to do with cooking. Maybe if you exchange ideas, you can get some more ideas for the kitchen from the TV channel, okay? And we've got this horizontal coordination where we can coordinate one department with the other department. Are you guys okay with this? Let's take CAC Bank as an example. Inside CAC Bank, they have some people inside CAC Bank that are specialized on the ATM machines. So they make the ATM machines, they put money inside ATM machines, ATM machines, they work. People come, they put their cards, they get money from the ATM machines. ATM machines, now they have cameras, you see? Now the idea of 
you get the other departments to help you make a better ATM machine. You get the security to install the cameras. You get the other IT to check on the security. You get the people who do the money counting to put better money inside. And the more you can coordinate and, uh, and uh, you do it on a horizontal level, which means other departments, the better you can come innovate your products and service. Next, we've got new product rates. Now, if you think about a new 100 ideas, you can develop 33 projects. Those 33 projects, you can have 28 pass all the tests. Some of them will fail. And then 24 will be fully commercialized. And maybe 14 will be successful in the marketplace. So from 100 ideas, how many succeeded? 14. So there is a chance some of the ideas will fail. But some ideas, they can Survive. rock. Uh, horizontal coordination for innovation. So do you understand the idea of horizontal coordination? Horizontal coordination is when students coordinate with each other for a project. When different departments in the company work together to develop something new. That's when uh, different uh, people on the same level get together to make something better. So here we've got the organization. We have the outside environment, outside environment. Now, outside environment that provide technical development, outside environment, which is customer needs. What happens inside the company? We've got here general manager, research and development, marketing department, production department. Now, to be successful and innovate, we have to get all of these people to work together. The marketing guy will see what the customer needs and bring it in. <coughs> R&D department, they will see what technical development are they, bring it in. And then those people will work with the production and they do the keyword here, coordinate, so that we can come up with a new product. This is easy to see, but it's difficult to implement. You see? Any questions? <coughs> 